our very first episode of Cook It in the Berg with Prestonsburg Tourism. This is a new series that's going to show you all kinds of fun faces from around Eastern Kentucky, bring you into our kitchens and where we get to share some of our favorite recipes that we're doing at home right now. So hopefully you're like myself and a lot of others and you're enjoying our amazing local restaurants right now and so many other great specials. But if you're like me, I know you're home probably quite a bit right now and have a chance to try out some really cool recipes and, and help your family stay happy and healthy at the same time. So today I'm our first guest here on Cooking in the Bird, and I'm going to bring you guys one of my favorite recipes. It's healthy-ish, right? But it is absolutely delicious and super easy to make. So today we're going to be learning how to make shrimp alfredo spaghetti squash. Now if you've not tried spaghetti squash, stay with me. You're going to love this. We're also going to partner it up with some delicious broccoli and maybe throw in some garlic bread right here and there too. So let's turn on. So let's learn how to make some spaghetti squash. Okay guys, so we've already rinsed and prepared our spaghetti squash. If you've not seen spaghetti squash, here's what we have. It's over um, in the vegetable section of whatever grocery store you go to. I have already cut off the ends. It just makes chopping it a little bit easier overall. <clears throat> so I went ahead and I cut those off. A little tip that I've learned is that if you throw your spaghetti squash in the microwave for like three, four minutes, it makes cutting it a little bit easier so it's still not a, a pretty sight so I will probably fast forward through this part here but one thing that you want to do because this is where our noodles are going to come from is you're going to want to cut it long way so you can get those nice long noodles after these have cut so we're going to go ahead and cut this up here our spaghetti squash and it looks kind of like the inside of a pumpkin does and one thing, while we're doing this, we're starting to preheat the oven at 400 degrees. I've seen that over 425, it gets a little too mushy because it pulls over all those juices into it. Um, but I like to go with 400 for about 40, 45 minutes. So next up, we're then gonna get rid of all these seeds here. Okay. So now is our last step of preparing and just prepping the spaghetti squash before we throw it onto, into the oven. And this is mostly just to get the nice texture that we want and just a little bit of flavor. <laughs> You're going to hear my dog, he, he gets the hyping up while we cook as well, Charlie's the man. So this honestly you can kind of do a little bit more or less, it just takes about a tablespoon or a teaspoon actually um, between both. So I just fill it up with some olive oil. We're just going to drench it here and there. We hear our oven is ready to go. Perfect timing. So you're just going to drench this all around, especially on the sides, because this is where our noodles are going to come to. And then you just take your hand and pull that oil all around. Now, I don't know if you guys are like me, but the reason I even got into spaghetti squash is because pasta is life, basically. So pasta is my all-out favorite meal. Any form of pasta I can go forever. I can actually give you a rundown of some of my favorite pasta meals. I guess if you want to hear it. Um, so if you're looking at just a regular spaghetti meal, man, you know, by the way, I'm just throwing on some salt and pepper just to give just a little bit of flavoring and then I'll probably add on a little bit of garlic powder as well. So we're just going to crank this on. But if you're looking for a great just traditional spaghetti, I love Billy Ray spaghetti. And then over um, with a little bit different flair, I do love Lizzie Bees because I'm not normally a meatball person, but they are bomb. And just recently, my new favorite, my new favorite pasta just overall is actually at Roma's, the chicken parmesan, or no, the chicken ravioli. It was a happy little accident that I got it, but it was so great. It's my new favorite pasta dish. You can go with the brisket mac and cheese or the pulled pork mac and cheese at Pig in the Poke, Brick House, and there's so many others have great Alfredos also. So that's our little rundown if you're not hungry yet. So next up, we're just going to put these on a pan and then we're going to throw them into the oven. Okay, these are seasoned and ready to go on into the oven. Now, I do see it often that these are actually turned upside down and baked that way, and that's completely fine. 
Well, this is my cooking show today, so I'm going to show you how I do it here. So I actually just leave them face up so they can get the full heat inside of them. Um, there are times that I guess I used to think they needed to be really mushy to have that spaghetti flair, but I do like them just a little bit crunchy and having a little bit more texture in them where they are so thin also. So we're ready to go and we are going to pop these in the oven for between 40 and 45 minutes. Now we're to the shrimp seasoning time and seasonings are your friends. Use them. Um, I have about a half pound of shrimp right now. I think we'll throw those up into the written recipe on this, but um, I'm cooking for two, so you can use a full pound if you're using, if you're cooking for four to six people as well. So we're just going to start off with our trusty friends, some garlic. I'm going to toss this in here. A little bit of seasoned salt. You can also use regular salt if you would like. I know this doesn't help in terms of um, counting. I also, I don't know if anybody else watches cooking show. If you're watching this, then I'm, I guess you do. Um, but I used to watch, I'm using onion powder. When I watched them, I really started to question my pinch of salt because I always thought a pinch of salt was just, you know, too. not to the, to the food network at all. So we're gonna throw in some that. I also want to throw in just a touch of dill weed. This is my favorite seafood seasoning of uh, pretty much any kind especially tilapias and different fillet fishes it is also delicious for breakfast is what i've learned so i've started throwing in a little bit of dill into um, like a vegetable frittata or some kind of a nice little morning vegetable um, breakfast as well just a touch of pepper and then i'm going to keep my parsley out to season the full thing here in just a little bit and you're just going to get on in there and stir it all up so we're just going to let this butter melt in here before we add our shrimp on in. I'll let my knife settle on my trusty spoon holder that I made from Yumi and Pottery downtown. All kinds of fun stuff. So we're going to let that settle on in there. Now with shrimp, it cooks super fast, so that's something that you don't want to overcook, especially when you mix all the ingredients in together. That heat's going to let them cook just a little bit more. So the shrimp's only going to take about four to five minutes total. So we're just going to get our butter going in here. And we will use the same pan for our sauce here in just a moment also. So we're going to go ahead and drop all of our shrimp inside of here. Stir that around so it can get the nice butter on it as well. I said healthy-ish, right? So we're gonna let that cook and then we're gonna come back to it here in just a minute. So you're gonna want each side to cook for two to three minutes is all. Flip it two to three minutes and then pull it on off the stove. We're gonna give that about another minute and then we're gonna flip. And then we're gonna hit the fun part, the sauce. If you haven't noticed, I've called every part the fun part. See, life is good. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna use the same pan that we did for the shrimp because it has the nice butter and seasonings down in there and the great shrimp flavor. So we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit more butter, about another tablespoon of butter into this as well. We're gonna let that simmer on in and melt throughout. Now I have done Alfredo sauce about every which way you possibly can. Um, depending on how you like it, it's one of those things that you can make as adventurous or easy as you would like. So our butter's in there. Now, if you want a really thicker cream, you can use uh, cream cheese. That's a great one as well. You can also use flour. The flour makes it really, really creamy. So if that's what you prefer, go for it. But for the spaghetti squash, um, where it's such a thin noodle, I prefer the really light version, and it also just happens to be the quickest and easiest. So it works out that way. So we're gonna start with a cup of heavy whipped cream. And we're gonna bring that to a boil first before we add our cheese in. Okay, so we're gonna let that boil up. Now, depending on what kind of flavor you would like also, I'm gonna go ahead and pour in just a little bit more cheese. I'm gonna start with a half a cup and then just adjust it based on texture that you can tell throughout. So you can really make this exactly how you want it. There's been times that I've added minced garlic to the beginning of it when I first put in the butter. You can also chop up onions and add them in there too. Um, it creates a really bold and a little bit heavier flavor, which is delicious, but I found that I actually prefer 
um, the powdered garlic and the powdered onion, just bringing those flavors out in a little bit lighter way. So we've got that to a boil. We're gonna pull this down to low and bring it off the heat for just a moment. You can see it bubble on up there. That's what you want. That's when you know your cream is ready to go. And you add in the most fun part. I call everything the fun part. We're gonna start sprinkling, sprinkling in our grated Parmesan cheese. And you wanna whisk this in pretty quickly. Now, as you're whisking, you're gonna kinda of have to move a little bit quicker so this doesn't settle on in. It's gonna bubble a little bit. That's perfect and just fine. So for here, nothing's really picking up as much, so we need to add just a little bit more creamer. But I like to gradually do it so it's not just one wham bam. I do love this recipe because it's such um, a balance between really yummy stuff, the cheese, the full creaminess, and then also vegetables. So during quarantine, I've noticed when I've been cooking that um, I've tried a lot of new recipes, but also I've really been gravitating towards a lot of vegetables and trying to cook vegetables that I've never really worked with before. And that's been really fun to do as well. I'm gonna pull, since I added some more cream, I'm gonna pull the heat up just a little bit. Keep whisking this through. And as that blends together, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in, oh, your spaghetti timer is done. Spaghetti squash. We're gonna check on that. I'm gonna add in, as that is going, a generous amount of pepper. Alexa, stop. It's like a Tom Cruise movie, guys. A little bit of seasoned salt. You can also use regular salt, whatever works for you. Garlic, really kind of the same seasonings that you use for your shrimp, you'll be able to double up with a really nice mixture of flavor. A little bit of onion seasoning as well. Get a little taste. Mm, that's tasting good, guys. Okay, so now it's time to check on our uh, spaghetti squash, come check it out. Oh yes, so if you see how it's starting to become nice and crispy, that's exactly what we want. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this out. I'm gonna let it sit for just a second. You can go and throw in some broccoli with this. You can do it as a side or add it into the pasta. I'm cheating. <laughs> I'm gonna be using frozen broccoli and just using the microwave with it. So we're just gonna give it a little splash of water, just a little bit. I'm gonna cover it up. And then I'm going to go ahead and put it in the microwave first for about three minutes and then follow it up, spin it around, and put it in for about five more minutes so it can be nice and steamed. Don't tell anyone. All right, then we're gonna go back to our sauce. Okay, so our sauce is looking good. I'm still gonna give it a little bit of a spin here and there. This is super easy, like I said, takes just a couple minutes. I've gone ahead and turned off the, um, the heat to this burner. Um, and then I'm just gonna let this set for a little bit so it can thicken up. And while that's happening, you can see, I wish I was the person that cleaned as I went. I'm not, thank goodness for my husband. Okay, so with spaghetti squash, this is the super fun part. So if you're looking at this and you're like, how in the world am I gonna make this make into something? This is when the fork comes in. So you're gonna take this spaghetti squash and you're just going to, that's not working guys. All right, so you're just gonna take it and you're just gonna pull down across here. So you're gonna go from the outside edge all the way down. Do you see all those delicious noodles that they're creating? Isn't that wonderful? We just pulled out our steamed broccoli. It looks absolutely delicious. It's that soft texture that we're going for. And since we're going to mix all this together, if you want to use the broccoli as a side, you can use it as is. But I'm gonna chop this up just a little bit so it flows with everything else. We've come to the conclusion just about. It's time to mix it all together. I'm gonna give my sauce another little spin. It's the thickness that I like. We're gonna go ahead and add our shrimp into this. Looks delicious. Go ahead and give that a spin so it can be coated. And then we're gonna throw in about two cups of broccoli. Add in a little bit more broccoli. Give that a good spin. We are almost ready, guys. We're then going to see how fine our spaghetti noodles are and then how much it makes also. So that's what's great is that one vegetable can literally feed an entire family. So 
we're gonna go ahead and add, I'm being silly. We're gonna go ahead and add our spaghetti squash into here as well. And what's great is you're gonna have leftovers, unless you just love it so much. I always think I'm going to have leftovers and then we see how that goes. We're gonna give this a nice swirl. Oh guys, this is looking good. You wouldn't even know that it's not real pasta noodles. So this is what's great is as we're staying healthy at home, um, we all get meals that we absolutely love. I know I went through a whole list of my favorite going out meal is um, typically always pasta or some type of pizza and big shout out to our restaurants and making so many great alternatives if you are wanting that good cheap meal or if you're trying to go healthy I love the cauliflower crust pizzas that people offer and of course like I said earlier a little chicken ravioli you can have your balance when we say healthy at home um, really use this time to value your time with your family create new meals see what you like what you don't like um, stay healthy in, in many many ways so I hope you guys enjoy this process also Okay guys, there you have it, our shrimp alfredo spaghetti boat. You can go ahead and put it all back in there. If you want to go one step further and be real fancy, you can then top this with a little cheese or breadcrumbs, panko crumbs, pop it in the oven for about 10 minutes, five, five to 10 minutes, and then you have a baked spaghetti boat. But I hope you guys enjoyed this meal. Enjoy time with your family. Um, know that we're all thinking of you. We can't wait to hear what recipes you guys have and hope you try this out as well. Thank you so much. Oh, and coming up next, you definitely want to stay tuned in this series because next up we'll have East Kentucky native Sarah teaching us some delicious seared, seared pan steak, sweet potatoes, and roasted broccoli. And y'all, she knocked it out of the park. It, I'm not going to say it's better, but it's definitely better. So definitely tune in next time for Sarah. She takes us through a delicious steak recipe. Thanks, guys.